Good evening, my fellow exorcists, and welcome to the Lair of the Film Exorcist. Tonight, we will be taking a look at Star Wars Darth Bane, Rule of Two. Now, Darth Bane is ready to put his policy into action, and he thinks he has found the key element that will make his triumph complete. A student to train in the ways of the dark side. Though she is young, Zana possesses an instinctive link to the dark side that rivals his own. With his guidance, she will become essential in his quest to destroy the Jedi and dominate the galaxy. There is one who is determined to stop Darth Bane, Johan Ofane, Padawan to Jedi Master Lord Hoff, who died at Bane's hands in the last great Sith War. Through, though the rest of the Jedi scoff at him, John's belief that there are surviving Sith on the loose is unshakable. As Johan continues his, do his dogged pursuit of the man who killed his master, Zana, faced with unexpectedly with a figure from her past, begins to question her embrace of the dark side, and Darth Bane is led by force-induced visions of a moon where he will acquire astonishing new knowledge and power, power that will alter him in ways he could never have imagined. Now before we move on to my opinion, I'd like to just announce that this video is sponsored by Animal. So go buy yourself some amazing low priced anime merch including cute figurines to brighten up your collection and every time you use the code FILM you'll get 5% off your purchases. To be honest, the story wasn't my favorite. I mean it was good but it just kept... it just felt so lacking. I found this book in the series to be very slow. I mean, where the first one was this power struggle of a young male becoming a Sith Lord and learning all these techniques. But this one is just Bane going from planet to planet to find all these secrets while also coming to Zana's rescue once in a while. But don't get me wrong, it is a good follow up to the origin story. It's just not as exciting. And I guess this was to be expected because all the Sith are dead. And the Jedi don't know that Bane has survived, at least until close to the end of the story. And this kind of makes the pace of the show the pace of the story slow down to a crawl. And I mean it was fun listening to the fight on Duxin, but the Beast Riders I mean it was fun listening to the fight on Duxin with the Beast Riders, but that's about it. I mean, learning about Bane's struggle to create a Sith holocron was pretty cool, and learning about the Orbalisk and learning how they feed on dark side energy was pretty awesome. But a lot of the great things in this book don't last as long as they should, and the beginning is just rehashing the comic Jedi vs. Sith, like the ending of the last book is. And while I say it. While I say that it was a clever idea, I kinda wish they'd done something different. Like start from the events that happened after, instead of making it the prologue. There was a lot this book could have done instead, but they didn't. And for me, it's kind it kinda begins to slow it begins the slow descent of the book's quality for me. I guess Johan was an interesting character. I mean he We've seen his type before, a Jedi who wants to avenge the death of his master, Lord Hoff, but instead, he is forced to stay on Coruscant to protect Chancellor Tarsus Valorum, who is the ancestor of Chancellor Phineas Valorum from Star Wars Episode 1. He seems to constantly be ready for a fight, which obviously goes against the wishes of his new master, Jedi Farfalla and ultimately ends up getting both him and his master killed. Darth Zana, on the other hand, was one of the most interesting characters because unlike Bane, she's constantly at conflict with the idea of losing her master and becoming the next Dark Lord of the Sith. We also see her fall in love and basically end her relationship with her cousin, Darvid, in one of the most brutal ways. Also. I liked how she was able to use her opponent's fear against them sometimes, causing them to lose control. I also love how most of the things she does is to protect her master, like researching how to remove the Orbalisk from his body, bringing him back to the healer who saved him the last time he was poisoned, and when, 
and when she brought that one Sif to her master to have him killed, despite also hoping he might be good enough to be her apprentice. I mean, it's obvious that she has ulterior motives for these actions, but it kind of shows that she really does look up to her master, and she feels there's so much more that he could teach her. I also love how her cousin Darvit is the only one trying to stop her from becoming a Sith Lord. I mean, he doesn't give up despite having one of his hands blown off by her, and this kind of makes the ending a lot more heartbreaking. We also get to see his journey as a healer for part of the book, and it's actually pretty interesting. I mean, he's lost his ideas of the Sith and the Jedi, and he had nothing until the... I forget what they're called. Um, they're these furry floating orbs in the sky who basically guide him to become a healer and become, in their words, a better man. Personally, this book was a mixed bag for me. And while, I, while I'll say that it's not bad, it's also not the best in the trilogy. That obviously would go to book to book one, Path of Destruction. So I'd like to give this book a 6 out of 10 for its interesting story and for the way it depicted Darvzana's Sif training. But again, there's still some parts that I feel they could have changed or improved on. Now if you're a Star Wars fan, I would definitely recommend this book because Darth Bane and Darvzana are honestly some of the coolest Sif you could read about. So go listen to it on Audible today. I promise you won't be disappointed. So please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and click the little notification bell for more content. And may the force be with you always.